Grab your Bibles and want you to run to 1 Peter um, 1 and 12. That's 1 Peter 1 and 12. As you turn, I'm going to pray. So, precious Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, God, for your grace and your mercy. We thank you for each and every person under the sound of my voice. Father, we thank you, O oh God, for all those, dear God, who have heard the word, who have listened to the word prior. But Father, we ask, dear God, that even as we have heard and experienced your presence at this moment, that we experience it even more. Lord, I'm asking that your word will go out, but that it won't return void. Lord, I'm asking, dear God, as I decrease, you increase. I'm asking, oh God, that your spirit, oh God, would change the life of the hearer of the word. And Father, I'm asking that we don't be hearers only, but also doers of the word. And I'm asking, oh God, in the name of Jesus, that you will have your way in this service today. We give you glory and honor and praise in Christ Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. Amen. First Peter 1 and 12, it said it was revealed to them that they were not serving themselves, but you. When they spoke of the things that have now been told you, by those who have preached the gospel to you by the Holy Spirit sent from heaven. Even angels long to look into these things. Therefore, with minds that are alert and sober and fully sober, set your hope on the grace to be brought to you when Jesus Christ is revealed at his coming. As those Obedient children do not conform to the evil desires you had when you lived in ignorance. <coughs> Excuse me. I want you to understand that it's the desire of God to set you free. I need you to understand before God, you were ignorant of God. And when we hear the word ignorant, the first thing we think of is a, it's assault. It's a, 
is a negative, is a bad. But the word ignorance simply means not knowing. Just that, that's all it means. It means that you don't know. <coughs> you didn't know before you got saved on how important it is to be saved. You didn't understand that you were slave to something that God has freed you from. But to be free from a thing and to not walk in the freedom of that thing is still not being free. See, God's trying to bring us to a level where we are free and that we walk in that freedom. See, this is a place to live in. This is not something to have for a moment. See, when I when I when I got saved and I let go some of my worldly ways, I found myself letting them go only for a season. But then I tend to draw back or to fall back to those things, and I went and picked up some of the very things that I put down. Have anybody been there? If we be honest, we all have. And what was happening was I was free from it for a moment, but I didn't understand how to walk in that freedom to be free from it forever. Now, how many understand and recognize that God is not a God of halfway doing anything? God is a God that does things completely. He completed the earth. He didn't have to come down and make any adjustments in those six days. He didn't have to come down and say, oh, man, I forgot Oh man, I meant to. He completed it. And then he rests. You have to understand that God wants you to walk in a freedom where you don't always going back to pick up something over and over again. God wants you to live in this freedom. Meaning that if God delivered you from something, that God is not interested in you going back to the very thing that he delivered you to. The word says it like this. It's like a dog that returned into vomit. Returned to his own vomit. The very thing that he tried to get out of him, he got out, but then he turned around and added back up. Anybody, know, anybody been around dogs, they do this. I've seen a dog do it, and it's the grossest thing in the world. But at the same time, what you have to understand and recognize that God does not want you to return back to the vomit that he got out of you. He's trying to pull that garbage out so that that garbage go get out of you and never return back into you so that you won't be enslaved to it never again. To be free from something means to not be under the snare of it or the state of not being in prison or enslaved by it. We talked about this several times in our series, Setting the Captives Free, about being enslaved. You know now what it is to be enslaved to anything and you know how uncomfortable it is to be slave to anything. There's an old saying, an old slogan that they used to use maybe back in the 70s or 80s or maybe even in the 90s, they used to say a mind was a terrible thing to waste. And it was from the United Negro College Fund where the mind, what they were speaking of, having a mind, a, a, a good mind and wasting that mind. Yes. And what had happened in the 80s was that drugs was came, came on the scene. And when drugs came on the scene, people became enslaved to those drugs. And it would cause them to what they would figure was wasting your mind. Because anything that controls you, that you don't control, that thing is destroying you. So you have to understand that there is things, and I know you get tired of me speaking on sin, but you have to understand there in order to be in freedom and to walk free, to live free, you can't live with sin. Because sin slaves us and enslaves us and causes us to be controlled just like that drug. See, your drug of choice may not be method, cocaine, or, 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 or alcohol, or whatever it is, but there is a drug that you deal with. And when that thing calls you, you have to go to it just like a crackhead that got to go to crack. 
you ever seen a crackhead would do things that would be un that's unimaginable to get that up uh, the next high. And many times the enemy would cause us to do things that is unimaginable just to get to that next fix of that sin that brings us pleasure just for a season or a moment. Oh, come on, somebody. <laughs> So that season, that moment, that situation that we think that we may feel that is something that is that feels so good. You ever, it's funny after you do it, you don't feel as good. Anybody that has that 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 is a drug addict, they'll tell you it feel good going up, but it feel horrible as you come down. You, you don't understand after you get done getting that booty you want or that body you want or that or that or that penis you want after you get done drinking the things that you want to drink and swearing or lying or whatever you're doing you have to understand after that feel after that then all of a sudden a feeling comes up and you say to yourself why did I do what I did and the reason why is because you have been enslaved to something that you have not yet got free from See, God is interested in delivering us. He's interested in deliverance. And I know in the church world, we, we throw these words around sometimes. And for those that are new to the faith and for those that are not yet came into Christ, we hear these words and we don't understand. Deliverance. What does it mean? What is deliverance? Well, it's the action of being rescued or set free. See, Christ came to set us free. And today, as our whole ministry on the premises of our ministry, you have to understand there's two things that this ministry focuses the most on. And it's prophecy, rainbow word from God, that bring forth deliverance. That's what this ministry is all tied into. And that's the reason why I say if it ain't changing you, then there's something wrong. Because Deliverance is all about bringing forth change. So when we look back at the story, we look back at this scripture, I rather, it talks about being sober-minded. And the purpose of being sober-minded is because I want you to understand that it's not what you do, it's what you think. And because a lot of times what you do has came from what you think. It starts with the thought, and I'm sure you heard this before. Now, just like any trained athlete, boxer, basketball, football, or if you even got a job where you have to perform, you gotta be conditioned. You gotta be conditioned to perform. And just like you are being conditioned to perform in sports or any, any, any area where you have to perform, you are also being conditioned by the world to do certain things that causes us to enslave ourselves Amen. or cause us to have enslaved ourselves. So I'm trying not to get far, too far ahead. Let me, let me slow it down here. It says in 14, as obedient children do not conform to the evil desires you had when you lived in ignorance. Understand living in ignorance is when you was a sinner is what he's speaking of. Meaning that as a saint of God, as a person of God, you're supposed to be living in a realm of freedom now that you are not ignorant of what God desires and wants for your very life. In other words, are you spending time getting to know enough about God to find out what is right and what's wrong in your particular life? What causing you to miss God or causing you to miss the opportunity to be in the presence of God should be your everyday desire. What do I need to do to live in a freedom that God wants me to live in and not feel like I'm bound or locked to things over and over again? It seems as if we fall to the same thing constantly, if you ever notice. It seems like we can't get past these very things because we have not yet took our mind outside of it. See, your mind been conditioned to believe what the world say and not been conditioned to believe what God say. 
that once you change your way of thinking about what the world say and understand what God is saying to you, then you can overcome the things that are holding you back mm-hmm. and cause you to walk in this freedom that I'm speaking of. Mm-hmm. I was going to get a little deeper. So you have to understand, I remember them talking about uh, Mike Tyson. And anyone that knows Mike Tyson, Mike Tyson to me was probably one of the greatest boxers there was. And Mike Tyson, in his training, one of the things that was told to him constantly that he was the fastest. He hit the hardest. He was the strongest. He could never lose. No one can beat him. And what they was doing, they was conditioning his mind to believe that he was unbeatable. And for a very long time, he bought into the process and he was unbeatable. See, to condition your body is one thing, but to condition your mind is another. See, I can walk out there strong, ripped. I mean, there's men that fought Mike Tyson that was ripped. I mean, I'm talking strong, big bodies and whatever not. And they would get out there. I mean, it was taller than him. There was guys that looked like giants that they had him going up against. I mean, at 14 and 15 years old, he was knocking out grown men. And the reason why, because his mind was conditioned. See, if you change your mind, you will believe what you're able to do. It was only until they put him in the, in the ring with someone else that felt that they was the same thing that he was. They was just as strong. I was, I'm just as strong as him. I'm just as powerful as him. I'm just as fast as him. And that then, ladies and gentlemen, will begin to turn into a real fight. But Buster Douglas, he was trained to think that he was able to beat him. So when he went to fight him, it, it, Mike Tyson had a hard time. You have to understand that God is not interested only in changing our outer appearance. He interests in changing the condition of our minds. If we can change the condition of our minds, then we can defeat anything that try to rise against us. Go to Proverbs 23 and 6. The problem today is not in what we do as much as in what we think. See, you get a man, a grown man, that has the emotions and feelings. Sometimes he'll feel uh, emotion or he'll begin to think that uh, something that a woman would think and all of a sudden he starts to think that he's a woman. See, because the enemy starts to play with his mind and say, you're not a man because a man wouldn't have these emotions. A man wouldn't have these feelings. And all of a sudden now he want to put on a dress and put on a lipstick. See, you got to understand what the enemy is doing. The enemy is is messing with the the minds of people. This black and white thing, these things with these polices, do you not understand that the reason why police is killing so many people because they're scared? It's fear. The enemy tells them, you better take them out before they take you out. See, it's it's the difference in the mind. If we can change the mind, the way that we see a thing or perceive a thing, to understand that this 12-year-old kid or this 13-year-old kid that has a brush or a cell phone not trying to take your life. So you don't have to shoot them dead. When you think, when you understand that it's okay because Jesus himself weak, it's okay for a man to weep, you don't think that you're a female because you're weak. For a female woman that has to be strong and tough doesn't necessarily you have to become a man just because you have because you have to be strong and tough in situations. But just because we feel and think and, and, and think these things, we become what we think. And the reason why the world is in the situation that they're in today is because we have not trained our mind to think the right way. We see everything the wrong way. And as long as you see everything the wrong way, you're going to make the wrong decisions and assumptions about things. Oh, come on, somebody. It said, eat, Proverbs 23 and 6. It said, eat thou not the bread of him 
that have evil eye, neither desire thou his dainty meat. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, said he to thee, but his heart is not with thee. For he, as he thinketh in his heart, so is that man. What, what, what God is saying here is that you got to understand you can tell a whole lot about a person by the way they think. And the way you think is going to eventually start to come out through you. Your mindset has to be changed in order to receive the freedom that God wants you to walk in. To get past the lies that have been spoken to your life, you're going to have to believe the truth so that you can go come back the lies that have been spoken to you and told about you for so many years. The things that the enemy tells you that you can't can accomplish. How many times did the enemy tell you that you be, your life's going to get turned off? Didn't the day ever get turned off? How many times did the enemy say you're not going to make it this month, but you make it? How many times did the enemy tell you that, oh, they're cheating, and you couldn't find out they're not? How many times the devil do these things and mess with our mind and have us to believe these things and you're walking around angry and frustrated about things that are not even so? Because he painted an illusion for you to believe. And once you believe a thing, as the word says, you become what you believe. The reason why many of us not walking in freedom because we don't believe that we're free. We don't believe that God came and did what God said he did for us. We have not yet grabbed that and accepted that and became one with the freedom that God told us he given us. We still believe that we're bound. We still believe that we're messed up by the enemy. We still believe that we're never going to accomplish what God called us to accomplish. We still think we're losing when we're winning. So the enemy paint pictures to make you feel a certain thing that is not true about you. Romans 12 and 1. It says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your body a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, and be not conformed to this world, or be not conditioned to this world. In other words, do not be, the word conform and, is, 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 and condition go hand in hand. In other words, don't let this world form a thought in your mind that you will end up becoming. See, when you got all these people walking around looking, want to look like the world, talk like the world, act like the world, then, they're, then, then they can't see God because God is not of the world. See, if you're so busy, is your idol, the person that you supposed to, if you care about is more than God, then you want to be like that individual and not like God. And we're so busy trying to be a duplicate when we, God made you original. We're so busy trying to be like other people when in the world and try to act like they act, dress like they act, smell like they smell, talk like they talk. But there's no freedom in that. Because that person that you're following, believe it or not, they're following somebody else. And then that person is following somebody else. And nobody is following Christ because everybody is following each other. And we have to get to a place where I'm going to look like him and not like the world. I don't want to look like the next famous basketball player, the next football player, or the next rapper, or the next, or the next, uh, uh, <coughs> I'm sorry, the next this person, or next that. The Bible says not to be conformed in order to let my mind be transformed into this. Why is that important? Because if you let your mind transfer, if you start to take the imagery of the world and looks like them, then you will never see the true imagery of God. See, if you follow the wrong picture, you can't see the right picture. If this is what it is, then you'll be blind of what, what, what really is the truth. So the enemy do whatever he can to paint as many pictures he can in your mental so that you can believe that, so that you can be so that you can be enslaved by that instead of being what God needs you to be, which is free. I'm interested in being and walking in the freedom that God created me for. See, 
If I'm worrying about this and I'm worrying about that, then that thing has power over me. Throughout the Bible, God tells us constantly, stop worrying. Because if, you, if you're worried about it, then that means you're not standing on what I told you. I want to be free from that, so I'm not worrying about a bill. I'm not worrying about this person cheating. I'm not worrying about this is going this way. I'm not worrying about this is going down. I'm not worrying about losing year. I'm not worrying about these things because I walk in freedom. And I walk in the freedom of God. And if I walk in the freedom of God, then I'm a slave to no man or no thing. Come on, somebody. It says, but trans, be ye transformed, transformed, meaning that you ever see, you see, we all see the movie Transformer. Transformer is meaning to turn into something else. Okay? Transformed by the renewing of what? Your mind. See, it starts in your mind. If I'm going to be free, I got to get free first in my mind. My mind can't be locked up thinking that I'm too ugly to receive a good person in my life. That I'm not worthy enough to have a decent spouse. I'm not worthy enough to have finances that I can put aside to be a blessing to somebody. I gotta stop thinking the way that I'm not thinking, that I'm gonna lose, that I'm gonna mess up, that I'm gonna blow it, that somebody's gonna bust me, that I'm gonna do something wrong. Stop it. Because you're not free. And it's hard to live a life when you feel like you're going to get in trouble at every moment. It's hard to live a life when you feel like you're doing something wrong at every, every turn. It's hard to walk in the freedom that God wants you to walk in when you let this world perform you instead of being transformed by the renewing of your mind. When you're going to get to a place where you say that, I'm not worried about this yet. When you're going to get to a place when you say, I'm not worried about that situation. I'm putting that thing in God's hand. And whatever God desires to do, that's what's going to be done. And I'm going to free myself of the responsibilities of the worries that I that this world has. I should be thinking like they're thinking. If they scared, they're scared. That's their business. But I should show them why I'm not scared. But if I'm sitting there shaking with them, then I'm not showing them anything. I'm not showing them that my God is stronger than the COVID. I'm not showing them that my God is stronger than the, the, the bills. I'm not showing them that my God is stronger than the things that they fear. If I'm fearing it too. Come on somebody. It says that you may prove what is that good and acceptable perfect will of God. See, I'm walking in such freedom that I'm proving the good and acceptable in the perfect will of God for my life. See, I want people to see me and know that that man is fulfilling what it was that God created him to fulfill. That woman is fulfilling what it is that God created her to fulfill. It's time out for us to be sitting around trying to be like the world. It's so funny that whatever the world gets, you run after it too. I've never seen it before in my life where, 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 where the church want to look like the world. We want to act just like they do. But you got to understand why. Why is that important that we don't? Because guess what? If we act like they do, then they have no hope. If they want to change, how can I change if I come to church and see the same thing I see in the world? If y'all doing the, what they doing, I might as well stay out here. If y'all dancing and partying in the church and clubbing, well, that's what they're doing here, out here. If the, if, the, if the first lady don't know how to dress and she out here with tight clothes on and naked, that having, that's what they're doing over here. If the pastor is looking at me every time I walk through, looking at my breasts and undressing me with his eyes, that's what I got to deal with with the men out there. The church got to be different. There need to be a difference between us and them. And it all starts with how we think. It all starts with how we see ourselves. But you can't see you until you get past those enslaved, enslaved thoughts that the enemy had placed in our head. We got to go past it. Look at this. Luke 16 and 19. <clears throat> I'm walking 
walking in the freedom, I want to get to an area, an arena, where I'm no longer locked up, locked down, held back for nothing. I got to walk in what God created me to walk in. I got to live the life that he desired, the life that he set for me to have. In order for me to do it, I gotta come out of myself. I gotta come out of what I've been taught and what I have learned and what I have seen. It's not about what, what, what everybody else is doing, it's about what God wants me to do. I want you to look at this story. Look at this story. The Bible says this it said, There was a rich man who was dressed in purple and fine linen. And live in a very luxury, live in luxury every day. And his gate was a, was made a beggar named Lazarus, covered with sores, and longing to eat what fell from that rich man's table. Even the dogs came and licked his sores. Talking about Lazarus. The time it came when the beggar died, and the angel carried him into Abraham's side. The rich man also died and was buried in Hades or in hell where he was in torment and he looked up and saw Abraham far away with Lazarus by his side. Now can you imagine this? Now I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm not I don't know if this is something that happens every day or not but here's a man that had everything. The Bible says he lived in luxury. He's in hell at this moment. He died, he said he went to hell, he obviously he didn't accept Christ. He in hell, he looks up his eyes, he looked from hell to heaven. I couldn't imagine this, because that's a what a form of torment. If I'm in hell and I'm looking at people that I thought would be down here with me. That, that, that sucks, is not it? So I don't know if God allowed this to happen. Was this a one-time situation or not? But he looks up and he sees Lazarus, which was the man that was begging at his gate. This man that didn't have anything. This man was was in pain. He was he was he had sores, and every time, I mean, every now and then, if we get some scraps that we may drop on the ground, or they taking out the garbage and some food fall, and maybe they eat the food that was from the garbage can. So bad. It was bad because he was in so much pain. Obviously, if he had sores on him, they obviously was oozing because if they ooze, that's why the dogs were licking it. So he was in very bad. A very bad situation. Okay, rich man looks up. He sees Lazarus in heaven. Now he couldn't imagine this because in his mind, how is it possible? How is it possible that this man that didn't have all of the fine things and all of the nice stuff like I did is in heaven and I'm down here in torment? Look at the story. So he called to him. He called to him and said, "Father Abraham." Have pity on me. Send Lazarus to dip his tip, the tip of his finger in water to cool my tongue because I am in agony in this fire. Now, 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 now look at it now. His mindset is so messed up that he still got the mindset that he had on this world in this world and, on, and down in hell because he thinks that Lazarus still is, is, is this beggar that he can just summon us to do whatever he wants done. Who are you? He still have not yet grabbed the concept. Because if he grabbed the concept, he would not be calling on the wrong name. Mm -hmm. Notice that he's calling the wrong name at this moment. Mm -hmm. He called him Lazarus. He should be calling him Jesus. But unfortunately, there's still nothing he can do. But at the same time, this goes to show us, uh, give us a little a glimpse of hell. Because he's in torment and he get, he's watching what's going on in heaven. And at the same time, it's so hot that he's just saying, hey, if you can just give me a drop of water. You can just dip the tip, the tip of your finger in the water, just a little something to cool my tongue. Okay, then this is agony now. He says, so he called to his father. Okay, okay, I'm sorry. About that. He said, because I'm in agony in this fire. So for the, for all of those that don't believe that the, their hell is real, this is this is the book of Luke. Okay, this is the New Testament. So for uh, let's go past that. You know, hell is an Old Testament. Old, no, this is new. Okay. But Abraham replied, he said, son, remember that in your lifetime you received good things, while Abraham received bad things. I mean, I'm sorry, by, by that, 
but while laid down here, received bad things. But now he is comfort here, and you are in agony. And besides all of this, between us and you are a great chasm, chisel that has been set in place so that those who want to go from here to you cannot, and for those that want to come from y'all to us cannot. In other words, there is no, once God judge you, there's no way of getting from hell to heaven. Okay? He just killed that right there. He just showed you. There's a chasm. In other words, God's judgment is there. Meaning that no one who has the authority to go past God's judgment. I can't go to hell from heaven no more than you can come to heaven from hell. But look at the situation though. He's in a situation because he did not recognize who God created him to be. He saw this, he saw himself so much better, so much greater, yet he's in torment because he had patterned himself around the things of the world. He had focused in on the things, guys, that have caused him to be drawn into hell instead of going to heaven. See, that freedom in his mind was not, that freedom that he thought he had in the world, he ended up in hell in slavery. Because he couldn't see the truth. He said this then. He said, okay, 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 okay. I, I understand that nothing can be done, but let me, ask, let me do this. He said, I beg you, Father, send Lazarus to my family at least. I, for I have five brothers. Let him warn them so that they would not also come to this place of torment. It's got to be pretty bad. Sounds pretty bad to me. Abraham replied and said, they have Moses and the prophets. Let them listen to them. No father, Abraham, he said. But if someone from the dead would go to them, they will repent. He said to them, if they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, they would not be convinced even if someone risen from the dead could come to tell us. He said, in other words, you shall let him know that for those that got the opportunity to hear what a man of God is trying to tell you, and you not listening, in other words, you have to understand the judgment that you face between from God based on a lot on how you listen. And not only do you listen to the word, but become a doer of the word. See, this thing is nothing to play with. This man is in so much torment that he said, listen, I don't want my brothers and family. I don't want nobody to come here. It's horrible now. I'm dying. I'm burning. I can't die. I got to just keep, I keep going through and going through over and over and over again. And he's crying out. But at the same time, the judgment has been passed. And he's letting them know they're going to have, your brothers and sisters going to have the same opportunities that you have. The question is, will they choose like you did? We have to, it's our job to be effective enough witnesses that they choose Christ and not this place that was not designed for them. But in order for them to choose freedom, to live for the Lord, then we have to first go there ourselves first. See, we have to be the one that let people understand, let people know that, listen, there's another place. That God doesn't want you to go to a place that wasn't designed for you. But the only way they're going to listen is they stop seeing these preachers that are not real. They stop seeing these saints that are not truly saints. We can't be saints on Monday, on Sundays, and, uh, and everything else throughout the week. You can't keep telling people that they need to serve God and trust your God and pray to your God, but at the same time, you go out of your other, out of the other side of your mouth, you're telling them where they can go and how fast they can get there. You're supposed to be an example. And it's very important that we are that example. John 8 and 35. We have to understand that God is trying to get us to a place where that freedom becomes attractive. It's so attractive that people will run to it. That they will want the God that you serve because they see him in you. 
They see it in your life. They see it in the things that you do. They see it in the way that you carry yourself. They see it in the way that you speak. They see it in all of the things that they begin to desire God through you. The question is, are we free enough to show that? Or are we still like everybody else? When, when they look at you, all they see is LeBron James. Or they look at you and they see this person or that person. Not a diss to LeBron. But I'm just saying, we a lot of times, we we, understand, we don't understand why the world, all these young kids are looking to be like these other, be ball players. And there's nothing wrong with being a ball player, but be a ball player that knows the Lord. You know, if you're going to train your kid up, the Bible says train them up the way they're supposed to go. That means train them in the word of God. Train them to serve the Lord that we you serve so that they can have the life that you're supposed to be showing them. It says in John 8 35, it says, Now a slave have no permanent place in the family, but a son belong to it forever. So if the son set you free, you are free indeed. See, you have to make up your mind if you're going to be a son or a slave. See, a son has a permanent place in the family. Amen. Meaning that a son, is, is gotta, all, when it's all said and done, he got to go home. And when he go home, his home is heaven. A slave is not. A slave, the Bible says how the enemy will be chained to hell. In other words, he's going to be a slave of the very place that he resides over right now. Understanding that same chain that hold him there, it'd be the same chain that holds some of us. If we won't accept being a son. We got to get to a place in life where we say, I want the freedom of a son. And Christ did come to set me free. And I'm going to walk in that freedom that he, that he came to give me. Come on, stand. I can walk this walk, or I can walk the walk that God created me to walk, mm -hmm. or I can do what I want to do and miss the opportunity of being what God wants me to be. I understand that hell and, hell and heaven and saving sin are things that people don't want to talk about no more. We spend so much time on telling you how great you are and how awesome you're going to be and what God's going to, I mean, what blessings going to happen for you and everybody can be a millionaire and all. We, we talk on so many little things about you and we talk more about people than we do about God. I think the church has made a mistake. There's something that's wrong when we turn attention to the people and took the attention from God of the people. See, the, see, it's all about Christ. And it got to always be about Christ. It's never about you. It's always about him. And the problem is, as I was telling someone the other day, that we have to try our best to be just like him. Our lives are supposed to be moderate behind him. And today, they're supposed to be in this 24th, 21st century, it's supposed to be a bunch of uh, sons and daughters of God. The Bible says it like this. It says that the whole world groans in, in agony and pain for the manifestation of the sons of God. In other words, the world is waiting for people to stand up and be children of God. It's still waiting. The, the, the harvest is plenty. There's no labors. Because we're so busy trying to be like the world and trying to get so much money like the world and trying to do what with? Are you going to take it with you? When you leave this earth, what good is it if a man to gain this whole world and loses his soul? We're so focused on the wrong stuff. Now, I don't have a problem with you having money. I don't have a problem with you being blessed. I don't have a problem with God doing it. But the problem is if that's where your focus is at, and your focus is not on God, then you miss the whole point. I'm talking to you out of a place of love. It is my desire that when I'm in heaven, I start to look around and I start to see people that I recognize. It is my desire that when I'm in heaven, that when I look at the Father, 
he has a big grin on his face because you're there and I'm there. And everybody that is connected to this ministry, that are friends to this ministry, that belongs to this ministry, we all there too. That's my heart's desire. Not to fleece you, not to take nothing from you, not to beat you up, not to put you down. My desire is for you to be everything that God needed you to be. And how you get there, you will have to change the way you see. You have to change your mind. And you're going to have to walk in freedom. In freedom. In freedom. So for those that are interested in being free, we're going to pray for you that you will receive this freedom that I speak of. That we will all go to this realm together and that we'll all walk out the freedom that God designed and that God's Son truly set us all free. I first want to start with those that are that, that don't know the Lord. You got to have to give you got to get on <laughs> the team in order for you first to receive any of this I'm talking of. So for you that are not on the team, let's get on the team. How do you get on the team? You simply confess your sins before the Lord. You ask, ask God to forgive you of your sins and you ask them in your heart. That puts you on the team. And for you that's already on the team and for you that has slid off the team but hoping us, uh, us to draft you back, come on back, come on back. For you that's like that, God, is, the Bible says he's married to you, meaning that he's so committed to you that he loves you so much that all you have to do is repent and just slide back over. And for you that have not left, that are on the team and been on the team for a while, I want you to pray with me. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, we come before your throne. Lord God, we ask God that you set us free, start in our minds. Because Father, if we set free there, then we walk free in everything. We want to be free, God. We don't, I'm not interested in being enslaved to anything. Lord God, I'm asking you, God, that every taskmaster, in the name of Jesus, God, that it held me or held us in place. Father, I pray that every intoxicating drug of sin that held us in place will be broken now in the name of Jesus. I pray, dear God, that every generational sin that have held us in place will be broken now in the name of Jesus. Father, we ask that your spirit come now. We ask that for your son blood to be upon our lives so that you will set us free with the truth and that every lie that has been spoken of our lives we bind it now and we break it now in the name of Jesus. Father, we command and decree that we are free and that we will walk in this freedom not just for a moment but in our entire life so that everybody can see that we are the sons and daughters of God. Father God, we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. I want you to like, subscribe, hit the bell notification on, the, on this video. And we'll see you in the next one. We love you. God bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Glory to your name, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father.